Hey folks, it's David from Retro Rides back again, uh, still at Goodwood Speed Week. Um, we managed to blag our way in somehow, and I'm here with uh, Huey Walker. And ordinarily, I generally know what I'm talking about with what car I'm looking at. But this I've not seen before mm. for a start, um, and um, I don't even know what it is to begin with. So ah. let, let's, let's take us through what it is and, and what's inside it, because that's, that's super important as well. Yeah, so um, this is a, a Schneider which is a French car built before the First World War. Okay. And um, as was done in the day, they took the small side valve engine out and roped in a quite large First World War airplane engine into it. Fantastic. So you've got a very lightweight chassis, no front brakes, oh. handbrake pretty much to slow you down, but it doesn't do much. Yeah. And a 10 litre four cylinder under the bonnet. 10 litre four, that's that's going some it is going some so um i'm guessing the power comes on gradually is it one yeah, of those so things it just, it's just... really talky i mean you've got max revs at fifteen thousand rpm okay so you know um 1500 rpm sorry oh, yeah, 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 um so you know yeah you don't want to buzz it and no. you know when you're going down the gear change no synchro mesh you have to blip it up to get it into gear lovely gearbox full speed uh, stub exhausts, obviously. Solid back end, so it's good for drifting. Yeah, so you got your sideways, so you're, sideways you're a lot of the time. some of these tyres. Fantastic. Are, you know, they're, they're pretty beefy, to be fair. I mean, people say they like bicycle tyres, but I mean, they can, they do hold it around the corners. Um, I mean, if it's lightweight, I mean, and you're going to have momentum, but it's still fairly a lightweight car. Yeah, so completely. Like... I mean, compared to some of the other stuff here, you yeah. know, this is probably 750 kilograms, and I'm not sure what the power is, but. I mean, it's never been on the rolling road or anything like that. It's just the stop, stop power of the day. Fantastic, fantastic. And the origin of the, the, the chassis and, and everything, where, whereabouts are you find, did you find this? No, did so uh, Nick Hilliard and Pip um, own this car and it was built by David Baker. Mm. And he got a rolling chassis and decided it needed to go a bit faster. So he put this engine in. I'll, I'll open the bonnet yeah, and have a look at the, the, show yeah. you what it's made of. So it's all, it's all pretty crude, you know, everything could be pretty much made in the shed. There's no sort of bespoke. Yeah, okay, so that was, that's what's interesting. I mean, these cars are, are, are so old, like pre-war, but the engineering is relatively manageable because well, it, it, yeah, I mean, it, it's elementary engineering. I mean, what really. you have to think, the first ever race, car race happened in 1895, and the average speed was about 25 miles an hour. Mm. You know, so we're talking 20 years on from that, you got cars that could race 100 mile an hour all day, every day. That's unbelievable rate of advancement, isn't it? Exactly. Really? And, you know, so this engine is a Hall Scott. It's an American made engine. So, as you can see, it's overhead cam. Fantastic. There's bevel drive at the front. You got um, almost a hemispherical head. So, it's really modern design. Yeah, that's, that's serious. There's nothing new under the sun. Like they, exactly. they, tried, they, they tried it all. And, For and sure. I mean, so you've got Magneto, you've got Twin Mag. So, obviously, in an aeroplane, you don't want your you're lucky to drop off. Yeah. So you've got twin mags, um, obviously your pot's quite big, it's water cooled. Um, and so this, interestingly, this engine was designed reverse engineered. So in 1914, Mercedes won uh, the French Grand Prix. So it was the most high tech engine yeah. in the world. You know, planes weren't what we know of them yeah. today, they were pretty basic. And one of the cars that competed in the Mercedes team was bought by a rich American, was flown over or shipped over just before the war. The war broke out and when America joined, they went, look, we need to have a lot of planes. We need to start doing this. We've got OX5s was the best engine of the day. This was a yeah. pre-war engine. You know, it's pretty basic. You know, the cylinders are all quite flimsy, it's push rod, it's, it's all a bit of a basic engine. Let me just double check something, when you say pre-war, which war? Ah, we're talking First World War, exactly. the real so war. Everyone thinks you're meaning Second World War right now, but yeah. these are pre-First World War cars, remember that. This is so it's, impressive. Yeah, it's so, yeah he, he shipped this engine over to the States. So, so, so the, the 14 engine was shipped over and he donated the engine to the military corps, I'm pretty sure, and they took the whole thing apart and basically made 
you know, uh, uh, an imperial version yeah. of the engine. <laughs> you know, change all the nuts and bolts, yeah. and this is what you've got. So what happened at the end of the war? There was massive war sort, war surplus of stuff. Yeah. So you could get a rolling chassis. You rip the engine out and you put basically a Formula One engine of five years earlier into your plane for bugger all. Amazing. You know, it's like, is oh, I can't think of a modern equivalent. There, there isn't a modern equivalent because exactly. nothing like that's happened. Because you just can't do that. And because it's so simple, there's no laptop to plug in, any man could have done it if he knows yeah. what to do with the spanner. So, you know, that, that's basically what it is. And so the gorgeous car to drive. Yeah. You know, it's pretty quick steering. It's about three quarters of a turn lock to lock. So you don't have to take your hands off the wheel at oh, all. Sorry. Yeah, it's just always It always stays contact. there. I mean, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty firmly, you know, sprung. Because yeah. you don't want any roll or yeah. anything like that. The thing is, you, you sit up quite high. Like, how intimidating is that when you're driving? I mean, you're very used to these. So I know I, you've been racing you know, a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm used to a car a bit like this, where you've got nothing in front of you, yeah. so I feel quite closed in, <laughs> um, you know, compared to some of the stuff of the day. But uh, what I've actually had to do is I've, excuse the mess, but um, <laughs> you know, I take the, I've taken the seat out so I can sit much lower in the car, because I like to, you know, you want to sit low. You want it, if it feels a little bit more solid. Exactly. So this is a road car, and the owner Nick and Pip have gone on many road trips in it. That's and incredible. They, they've probably done. Over you know five thousand miles and it's on the road trips to France because it's completely usable. Yeah. You know it's a soft as pudding engine, but when you bring it into the high, it just keeps pulling. Next year keeps pulling. Amazing. And it's all this pre-aero stuff. You know before downforce and any of that yeah. stuff, you're streamlined. You just keep going and going and going. But I'm sitting there. You know I look through the steering wheel. So so when you're driving, when you're racing in this, I mean obviously you're steering, gear. It's like relatively normal it it's feels like relatively normal I mean people find tender. it a bit weird this on the outside yeah. but you know you don't have a lot of room in the canopy uh, but this is your only brake so you, there is a foot brake as right. well but it's transmission brake and it's not particularly great oh yes because they slow yes yeah. that's right so yeah, what you normally sorry, do when you're coming into a corner you put it on on the ratchet then you can change down yeah. and then when they're calling hyphen you turn in fantastic um, and i'm guessing because it's quite a talky engine is there is there much engine brake in there as well there's a fair bit of engine brake you see you have to be quite careful when you come off the brake when you come off the clutch and the down yeah. change because if you're already on the brake like that and you do the down change you come off too heavily it could slow the wheels down enough to lock them and then that handbrake keeps the lock on right so you have to be really quite careful like it happened once in practice i was coming towards the chicane Handbrake on, I was in third gear, into second, gave it a blip, into second, off the clutch, and it's like, uh, it locked up, you know, and you have to get off the brake and then come back on it again. You know, it's a bit, it's all sort of happening. It, it, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, it's like, it's a full body kind yeah, of experience, for sure. really, for uh, racing. As you say, it's like fairly tractable for driving around the road, for but sure. taking it uh, out on a track, on an actual track is, uh, yeah. is intimidating. You know, your, your tyres are quite close. Yeah, yeah I, get it, I, I would worry. Keep I mean, your elbows I'm going to say, you're a big guy, so like, like the, the, uh, the elbows are pretty close to that tyre. Right. I mean, you wear a leather jacket on the road, and sadly, we can't wear leathers when we're racing. We have to wear frame proofs because of yeah. the regulations. But you're going to fall out this car if you crash it. You're yeah. not going to be kept in it. Yeah. So I'd rather wear leathers. But it, 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 I guess the regulations are, are what they are. Exactly. They're not taking into account uh, mm. 1913 cars. Exactly. Well, this is just an absolute treat to see. We love you guys. We love all the VSCC stuff, and we love that you bring these things out to Goodwood as well. Definitely. So um, just keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah, we'll it's do. Brilliant. I mean, we race lots of different events through the year. Goodwood's just one of the ones yeah. on the calendar, but we are VSCC through and through. Yeah. And you'll see this at loads of different events on the calendar. And you know, some of these stuff do everything from the racing to the trialing, hill climbing, yeah, mud flooding, the, the lot. You, you would think these are uh, not quite museum pieces, but you would think these are mu museum pieces because they're sort of such early cars. But these guys are out there using them properly because cars are there to be used properly. It's not a piece of art, you don't no. put it on the wall. No, it's fabulous. So check out VSCC, um, they're at Shelsley Walsh, like our, our events, and um, race circuits across the country. They do trialling and um, mud trials That's and all brilliant. that stuff throughout the year. Like literally throughout the year, you can go and see a VSCC thing. So go and check those guys out there. They're the best kind of madness. We love them. Have a good one. Thank you. No worries.
Thank you.